1938 when the game was in its infancy and featured 22 future baseball Hall of Famers. Just weeks after his consecutive no-hitters, Red Southpaw Johnny Vandermeer started the game and tossed three shutout innings to earn the win in the NL's 4-1 victory. The game returned to Crossley Field in 1953 with Boston's Ted Williams throwing out a ceremonial first pitch just four days after returning from military service. Negro League star Satchel Paige was one of 23 future Hall of Famers in the game and he made history as the oldest player in All-Star history at the age of 46. In 1970, the All-Star Game held christened Riverfront Stadium, which hosted the game just two weeks after opening. With President Richard Nixon in attendance, the National League won 5-4 in 12 innings, when Pete Rose famously bowled over Ray Foxy at home plate to score the winning run. MVP honors went to Boston's Carl Yastrzemski, who joined Frank Robinson, Hank Aaron, Willie Mays, Tony Perez, Johnny Bench, and Joe Morgan, among 19 future Hall of Famers that year. Riverfront was host a second time in 1988, with Vice President George H.W. Bush as a special guest for the ceremonial first pitch. Fourteen future Hall of Famers were on the rosters for that game, including Greg Maddox and Barry Larkin, making their first All-Star appearances. The 88 game also was the final Midsummer Classic for a trio of Hall of Famers, George Brett, Dave Winfield, and Gary Carter. In 2015, another exciting chapter of All-Star Game history will be written along the Ohio River, right here at Great American Ballpark. Fans now